paralysis right there on the temporal fossa of the temporal bone. Does that make sense, right? And then we go down here to the back of the neck. Trapezius, platysma, that thin muscle on the front of the neck. It's very, very, very thin. It's see-through, actually. Then we got sternocleidomastoid. How do we know that's the sternocleidomastoid? Because it goes to the mastoid. That's the insertion point. This nice, thick muscle on the side of the cheek is the masseter, one of the major chewing muscles. So the masseter plus the temporalis gives you the, the closing of the jaw, right? They also call it elevating of the jaw because your jaw actually comes up. But yeah, those help you chew. They help you bite down. And they're also responsible for a whole lot of headaches and jaw problems when they're not uh, functioning correctly. Now, again, this one's not labeled, but the one right here between the trap and the sternocleidomastoid, in lab we covered it, splenius capitis. We didn't, we didn't Can you cover that one? Anything attaching to the skull would be a capitis muscle. So splenius capitis is right there in between those two. All right, now getting to the tougher ones, the smaller ones in the face. Orbicularis oculi. Again, we're going to be going in a more of a clockwise system. Uh, it's always, even on the wrist and uh, lower leg, this is the way you get through those small muscles. You have an order to them. That way, no matter what model you get, if you know the order, then you're not really so lost, right? So in order, from the, around the eye, orbicularis oculi, right? Now coming just inferior to the eye, this was levator labi superioris, zygomaticus minor, the little small sliver there, then zygomaticus major. Then we come to the, actually the buccinator, right in between there, right on the cheek. Just to the right on this picture of zygomaticus is the buccinator, a little triangle right in between the resorius and buccinator, and zygomaticus, excuse me. Then right on the side of the mouth is Rosorius coming straight out to the side. We're skipping this one, which would be the um, anguli oris right here. And we're coming to this one. Depressor lay by inferioris right under the um, lip. And then mentalis right on the chin and orbicularis oris right around the mouth. So you've done those in lab, just, uh, you know, you have a few questions on that, of course. And there's the rest of them labeled. We just separated them on the slides just to, to have room. We couldn't fit them all on one slide. But there's your quiz right there. If you can do that, then, you're, you know, you've mastered the, the face and, and the head, right? If you can't do that, it means you need to work on it. Because obviously you'll get some of those wrong <laughs> on, your lab, on your lab test. So... The way you do this is, first of all, take a breath, maybe take a sip of your iced mocha, and ignore all the small ones, do the big ones first. So again, frontalis, temporalis, occipitalis, trapezius, in between trapezius and sternocleido is the splenius capitis, right? Then you got sternocleido, platysma down below the neck. Master, beautiful. Got all those out of the way. Now the smaller ones, orbicularis oculi, levator labi, zygomaticus minor major, then buccinator, resorius. I'm going straight down the line. Now we're skipping over these, these right there, going to the inferior, right? The depressor labi. Then to the mentalis. Then lastly, orbicularis oris. The oculi was around the eye. Hopefully I said that correctly last time. The orus is around the mouth. So that's it. I don't know. I think it's about, what, I didn't count, about 18 muscles maybe, something like that. Somewhere around there. Okay, beautiful. That's it. So now we can skip over those. On to the neck. Here are some basic biomechanics like we said over here based on location. Some muscles will be anterior. Some muscles will be posterior. Those that are anterior on the neck will do what? Flex. Flex. Those that are posterior... Extend. So we talk about the, uh, the posterior ones first. There's a lot of muscles that work on the neck. They're not even listed here. They're little small muscles between the vertebra. We're kind of skipping over those. One of the biggest ones we can see is the trapezius. Trapezius is tricky because it is very much a scapular muscle. It, it, 
it lifts up the scapula, right? And it depresses it, and it retracts it. So we'll get to that later. So when you roll your shoulders, that's really your, your trap of doing a lot of that motion. But since it does attach to the skull as well, at the EOP, the external occipital protuberance, it's that bump on the back of your skull. Since it does attach to the skull, it can pull the skull where? Backwards, right? Why can it pull it backwards? Because it's posterior and because it, it crosses that joint, because it crosses the neck joint. Yeah? That EOP is, I also in the lab heard it referred to as the superior lunate line or superior something line. Nuchal line? Nu yeah. Nuchal. That's not right. There is a superior nuchal line, but that's not the EOP. The EOP is specifically that part, you could say, of the nuchal line. Because in, in the book it says that that's where it attaches to. If, if it, it fans out to the nuchal line, but the EOP is its own point. Okay. So it's related to the nuchal line, yes, but the EOP is still its own point. They're, they're related to each other, is what I'm trying to say, but it is not the same thing. The nuchal line does not equal the EOP. Does it insert into both? It, it kind of fans out and may touch both, yeah. Okay. But the main attachment point is the EOP. Okay. Anyway, so you can see that origin goes all the way down the spine. So that's a big origin. So now you can see the trap is going to have a lot of action on the back here, on, the, on scapula. But we're only concerned about the neck in this case, so it obviously extends the neck. So if 